sure. Hello, Christopher. Hello, Can Info. you please introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, my name is Christopher Cardenbicus. I'm very excited to have you in my studio here in Brooklyn. Um, this is where I've been making books for the past few months, and I have been living in New York as my home for the past year, year plus, before that in LA. But yeah, it's been interesting to be in New York and using this as a space to be making books and zines. Mm -hmm. So most of your um, work uh, as an artist is uh, making books and publications. Yeah. Can you tell us what type of publications do you make and what we can find in them? Yeah, well, I do, or I have done a few different projects. I do um, artist books most regularly and more recently. So that will be largely small editions and looking at different ways that I can work with the book form, whether that's uh, format or printing process or methods of binding. Um, since I've been making books and zines for the past like 10, 10 to 12 years, at this point I'm kind of deep within my own, my own trip really and allowing each subsequent, subsequent book project to just lead me down mm -hmm. whatever path my curiosities will take me. Um, but when I first started making zines in Pittsburgh, I started coming to the zine form as a way to interact with that community. So what was interesting to me about zines and books is that it, how it just instantly opens itself up to a larger audience. Mm -hmm. And what I found with, with the zines is that it was a great way to, to introduce yourself to a city, to a location, and to a larger community of, art, of artists and makers. And, people who were interested in the arts but weren't necessarily interested in going to like galleries. Mm. Yeah, different type of people. Yeah. And so the one that I just showed are the most uh, recent productions. So mm -hmm. some of them are unique books and some of them are zines. And can you tell us about uh, the projects that you did before? Uh, yeah, so I guess we can work kind of backwards in time. What you just mm -hmm. showed were works from the past two years that I've been doing as part of a book a month project where I was producing a new book um, every 30 days and that had its own time constraints that limited what I could do in terms of production run. Um, but prior to that I was working in larger editions with zines and working with different communities. So before I moved um, to New York I was in Southern California in LA and San Diego working on a project called Gravity and Trajectory and I was working on that with my friend Louis Schmidt who's now based in Los Angeles. And what we were doing with that, this as a zine project is saying that our zine right here is kind of like our galleries, our gallery mm. space. So we presented kind of like exhibitions. Yeah, exactly. So we would present um, each artist that we were working with, with this strict format. It's X amount of pages, it's a certain size, um, we're printing it with one printer. So this is your constraints that you have to work with. And if this is your physical space, how do you, sh how do you show your work? And what was nice about this project is that it was there, in every instance, it was the first time that the people that we were working with were creating an art book. So there were solo shows. Somehow. Yeah, exactly. There were solo shows. And then we would then uh, distribute these books through Southern California. So it was a way to look at Southern California artists and distributing their work through that space and to see how they interacted with the environment. Before that, I was living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I was working on a project called Encyclopedia Destructica and did that for about six or seven years. And it really started out um, as part of my senior project at Carnegie Mellon in 2005 as a way to get to know the city. Um, Encyclopedia Destructica was made so that I could reach out to fellow young artists in the city and try to figure out what we were all doing. Um, I wanted Encyclopedia Destructica to be like a very active, space where if you wanted to know what the young artists were working on in Pittsburgh, all you needed to do was find one of these zines. And this would show you what was happening like right that instant. And we would distribute the zines through like libraries, small bookstores, coffee shops. You'd get one for free just as easily as coming to our parties and mm -hmm. our release parties and buying one from us. And what was nice about the project is that it, um, it always involves so many people. So it was myself and my partner at the time, Jazdeep Kara, as the editors, co-editors of the project. But for each book, we would invite a separate person to come in and um, edit the book or curate it. So we're still looking at like the book as an exhibition space and the book as a place or as a um, specific locality. 
but we were opening it up to as many people as possible and trying to play around with like pseudo forms of mass production. So these runs were like 200 copies or so. Mm -hmm. And so is that, so you don't make any exhibitions, you just make exhibitions inside of publications? Well, I do exhibitions as well. So I have my work shown um, in solo shows or group shows that are either just the book works mm -hmm. or like larger drawings and print pieces that kind of spill out of the books. But I've also been organizing book shows um, for a few years now. Most recently, a project called Pulp Atlas, which is run a little bit more like a print exchange where I invited um, 12 artists into the project and the rules were that each artist had to produce 12 copies of a book and then mail it to everyone. So everyone ended up with one copy of everyone's book. And then each participating artist was responsible for hosting a show in their city. Um, so this allowed us to be all over the country and um, in Canada and in the UK simultaneously. Which was and really so nice. even if they weren't mass produced or sold, they weren't sold? They weren't sold, but they all were... All of these copies were seen and read by a lot of people yeah. in, in a lot of different places. Exactly. And it was nice to have a variety of events around the books. Some would be like proper show openings where they'd be exhibited for like an entire month in largely alternative spaces. So one of these shows existed in the bookstore in San Francisco called Needles and Pens, which is a really big landmark in the zine community. But they would also be in places like the San Jose Library or the Free Public Library in, in Philadelphia, where they exist for a month or so at a time. Um, but we would also do one-night events like we did here in New York at the uh, Reanimation Library, where it was myself and two of the other artists in the project talking about our work specifically that we made for the, for the, for the project. And also we're able to introduce everyone else's book pieces and have them available for the audience to look at and mm -hmm. you know, take questions and everything. So it's been a really wonderful thing to see people in public looking through books. Mm -hmm. It's a very different very different thing, you know, standing in the middle of the room, like looking out at your, uh, at paintings or at film or something like this, you're kind of like right up against like the wall or the table wherever the book is, nose deep in something. So it's a very different way of consuming these. Mm -hmm. And now you're working on a new project called Paper Cuts. Yeah, um, which is great that you're here because then we can turn the recording devices around and we can ask you a few questions. But Paper Cuts is a program on Clock Tower Radio um, that's an internet-based radio program and we focus on DIY publishing, on zines and artist books, and it's a reading and discussion uh, program. So oftentimes people will be on the program reading their works and then we talk about what they do with zines and other times it's more just like discussion of the craft and the process and, and this uh, larger dynamic of how zines can work within the community which has been really wonderful and has been a new way for me to explore in New York. And most recently with the LAR Book Fair, we, myself and uh, my partner in, in crime, parts of the uh, Paper Cuts family, Taylor Yates, um, went through and recorded like seven or so episodes in Los Angeles. Oh. So it's, it's a lot of people that we've been able to speak to in the past year. And it's exciting to, like, to develop that kind of archive of the, of the mm -hmm. zine world. And so where do you think, where do you see this project going? Oh man, with paper cuts, it would be great to just keep it running and try to expand it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I've been trying to do with it is, it's not just interviewing people, but trying to get people involved in it. So if you're a guest in the program, that also means that you're someone that would be approaching later to be part of a like live reading um, in the city. And we do readings every month in different bookstores. Um, or to contribute to our newsletter, which you can uh, subscribe to, or to host episodes yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's something where like, I've had a great time interviewing people and being like the host of the program, but I'm also far more interested in hearing conversations between other people. Mm -hmm. um, and if someone who was a guest has a proposal to talk to someone else in the recording studio, then I'm all for giving up the host chair mm -hmm. and just like hanging out in the audience for a little bit. Again, it just goes back to this idea that the, the things that's really exciting to me about zines and publications is the, the community that can develop around it. And anything that I can do to, to foster that is the direction that I want these projects to be going in. Um, 
now I, I, will, I really want to ask you about your own work and um, what's your inspiration for your work? Uh, um, I mean, there's a lot of things about uh, science fiction uh -huh. and also science and maybe the relationship between the two. And then there are the comic books who are... Yeah. Ma maybe it's new in your work. Uh, no, the comics have kind of always been there and the comics have been... Um, kind of a root source of how I've approached different publication projects because with early things like Marvel Comics, um, what drew me to that was not just the storytelling and the narrative aspect of something of comics that I've brought into my work ever since I uh, became interested in comics and wanted to make artwork myself, but the way that it gave the impression that the comic books were made. They are made by a community of people all working together to make one book and it made that um, assembly line project or process also feel like this um, larger family network. So if you were working on Spider-Man, it was a collaboration between like the writer and the artist and the inker and the colorist and every like all these hands working together to make this story that was very very powerful. And creating this like shared universe and this the the fiction of the Marvel bullpen in the '60s was that everyone was kind of like in it together and and making all these like. Uh, crazy stories and having the time of their life and of course that's not really the case but I wanted to take that um, perceived notion of a family of, of co-workers and apply that to something like Encyclopedia of mm -hmm. something like Gravity and Trajectory we can almost like dare each other into doing bigger and better things with the zine and book projects um, but the other part of the comic books for me in terms of my work is the storytelling aspect. I think that, that is how I've looked at books and how they can function um, throughout my entire publication process. Oftentimes I look at the books and zines I've made for like the book a month project as almost like small experiments. I might have a printing process that I want to play around with or one like visual that I want to see and want to like tweak and toy around with and then the zine becomes like an experiment. So I have this one thing, this one idea, and then how do I turn this into like a little story? How do I then like spin that yarn for 20 or 30 pages? Um, so there's definitely a, a, an interest in narrative storytelling, even though it's not necessarily like plot driven. It's like telling a story through mm -hmm. pacing of a book. Mm -hmm. um, but I am really interested in the history of, of science and the history of science fiction. Part of that is the idea of like a building a speculative world or just world building in general. And when you apply that to art making, it's not looking at necessarily like characters or plot or uh, narrative structure, but you're looking at um, like texture and color and process and how do you work those together within a single piece to develop a world. And that's what I'm trying to play around with oftentimes, but the interest in science fiction is also just like such a strong history in, in the printed word and in print production. Um, so I've done books that are just like one-to-one -one scans of older books or like larger narrative print drawing things that are based off of uh, older works of science fiction and trying to like develop this world in order to discuss what's, what's on your mind or what you're thinking of or like how to discuss this current moment. I feel like science fiction as a genre is a really interesting way to do that. And when you're looking at things like uh, a history of science and these ideas that are so a history of science is kind of filled with a history of ideas that are failed and they're really interesting not necessarily because they're failures or not necessarily because they have failed but because they still have things to say and provide different ways to look at the world that we're living in currently um, so that will just constantly be a wellspring that I go back to over and over again mm -hmm. and so would you say that your work is about imagining another possible world. Yeah, I think. And if so, what? How different from ours would would that world be? It doesn't have to be very different. It's almost like creating versions. Mm -hmm. So if you look at each book as its own unique system, then it's like each book is, is its own world and it has its own rules and its own system of moving through it. Um, so the answer is like it can't be infinite worlds and they can relate to each other in different ways or they can be their own unique things but each book is its own is a system 
and how it plays around with the other systems can can remain to be seen. But again, like that's that is one of the things I like about it is that you know you close the book, you open up a new one, and it's like a whole mm-hmm. different way of of working. And I think that's one of the things that's been interesting with this book a month project. Um, that was both really uh, useful in terms of book production and art production. And also one of the reasons that I'm very happy that I'm not doing it any longer. So this year I've stopped doing a book every month. Um, and that's because at the end of 30 days, you're confronted with like a complete wasteland. <laughs> you're you're, you're starting this project over. you're starting again. It's like, oh fuck, I need to build a new world. <laughs> and you know, and it's not, it's not the, uh, the easiest thing to do. But that being said, each book kind of spawns like so many other ideas or so many things that you're working on just because of having the closeness to your materials and to your practice. And that is one of the really great things about the past couple of years is that it's, um, it created a very strong daily ritual mm-hmm. where you start to stumble across um, processes, ideas, and ways of making, your, of making marks that you would only really come across if you're spending every day at the table just like folding paper endlessly or like finding like different ways to sew things. So it's that kind of um, deep interest in materials that was, that's really interesting about that kind of a project. Um, but now having gone through it for a couple of years, it's really interesting for me to like press out and to expand a little bit because like I said, I've been here for a little over a year now and I want to be working with some of the really wonderful people that I've met, not just in like short interviews through paper cuts, mm-hmm. but doing like larger print projects or collaborative books. So if you can look at my history of work, almost like a pendulum is starting to swing back towards a, a collaborative direction, which I'm very excited for. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you so thank much. You.